dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. After a long gap during the Lent and Easter seasons and many important solemnities, we are back to what is known as the ordinary Sundays in the liturgical year. And today is the 11th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And welcome to this homily. Today's Gospel passage comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 9, verse 36, to chapter 10, verse 8. And we read that Jesus who felt compassion for the crowds that desperately followed him, gives the disciples his missionary mandate. And our focus today will be on our call as believers to share what we have received. If we consider what we have as precious, then show it to others, share it with them. And this is our missionary call. Let me start with something interesting that I read about the world famous drink, Coca-Cola. Yes, of course, it is indeed world famous. A survey reveals that 97% of the people have heard about it. 72% have seen a can of it and 51% have tasted it. It all started in 1886 when a pharmacist, John Pembert in Atlanta, America, who made a new drink, actually a tonic for many diseases from the coca leaves and cola nuts and sold it in his pharmacy. It became popular among his customers who tried it. From 1921, Robert Woodruff was the director of the company, which his father had already acquired from Pembert. And he asked himself, why not everyone in the world get the taste of this drink and see where it stands now? The dream of one man, of course, business. Now think of it. If every Christian, every one of us were to cherish this vision, why not everyone in the world hear the word of God and work for it? How different the world would have been. But unfortunately, look at where the world is. Hardly 32% of the world population is Christian. Although millions are thirsting for a new tonic, the gospel that Jesus brought, unfortunately, we don't hold that vision. But we realize, having assigned that duty to the priests, bishops, religious, and missionaries. And Jesus says, you received freely, give freely freely. When the church teaches that the church is missionary by nature, it means that all of us are called to share our gift with others. Yes, dear sisters and brothers, indeed we are a privileged people. The fact that you are listening to this homily and that I am speaking shows that we have been given the special blessing of being believers, God's people. Somehow, some way, we have been touched by God's grace. In the first reading, God tells the people of Israel how privileged they are that the Lord delivered them from Egypt and bore them on eagles' wings to make them the Lord's own possession among all peoples. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds us of the special love of God for us, that he loved us while we were yet sinners. And in the gospel, Jesus commands his disciples, freely you have received, and now freely give. Yes, we have this responsibility to share the gift of our faith we are privileged to have received in his grace. Look at how St. Matthew presents today's gospel scene. Verse 35 of chapter 9 is about how Jesus was teaching and preaching and healing in the cities and villages. And from verse 36, seeing the multitudes following him, Jesus felt compassion for them because they were confused and troubled, like a sheep without a shepherd. Their yearning hunger was not only for physical food, for healing alone, and Jesus realized it. He realized that there is a deeper desire, hunger in everyone, 
that can only be satiated by the word of God. For man does not live by bread alone. And that's why Jesus focuses on sharing the good news of salvation to all. And in narrating the instruction of Jesus to the disciples, St. Matthew uses two images. The first one is that of a shepherd. The people were like a sheep without a shepherd. For they had no leadership to help them experience the power and nearness of God, about which Moses spoke in the first reading. This means, though the Jewish people of that day indeed had their spiritual guides and shepherds, namely the scribes, the, free, the priests and Pharisees, for the most part they were worthless and failed in their duties. So they needed shepherds who cared for them. And the second image is that of a harvest, which will surely be wasted if there are not enough laborers to reap. So a neglected flock of sheep and a harvest going to waste for lack of reapers. Both these images point not only to a pitiful plight of the people, but also a blameworthy neglect of duty on the part of the leaders. And universalizing these images to include all of us, he says, we are the ones who were given this free gift of faith in Jesus. And now it is our responsibility to give it to others, to make sure that the sheep are taken care of and the harvest is not wasted. There are two objections normally many raise about their inability to preach the gospel. First, I cannot go out as missionary to preach because I have a family, I have responsibilities. Second, I have no talents to do it or I have a lot of limitations. The gospel passage today takes care of both these objections. Firstly, about going out to preach. One confusing thing in today's passage and also in other places is Jesus telling them not to go to the Gentiles but to the lost sheep of Israel alone to preach. That means only to their own lost brethren, the fellow Jews, who are failing to grasp the power of Jesus' good news. But why does Jesus ask them to exclude the non-Jews? while God surely wants all to be saved. Let me put it this way. According to today's gospel, there can be three levels of, or ways of preaching. By means of prayer, preaching to those who are around us, our kith and kin, and preaching to those who are far off as missionaries. Jesus in this passage only talks about the first two, praying for the spread of the kingdom and preaching to one's own people, the Jews, who need the word of God. In our case, it could be our families, our friends, or neighbors. But preaching to those far off, yes, to the Gentiles, requires the special power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus would choose people like St. Paul to go to them after the Pentecost. Today also there are missionaries who reach out to those Gentiles, but all are not given this mandate. Jesus calls specific people for specific ministries in the church. Not all are prophets, not all apostles, not all teachers, tells St. Paul, 1 Corinthians 12, 29. But there is one common duty, to preach the gospel to speak about the good news of God's love. So if you are so much inspired and urged by this gift you have received, the Lord will also give you his spirit to go out as missionaries. But even if not, you can evangelize in other similar ways in proportion to who and what you are. It can be in little ways through our prayer for evangelization or by giving the good news to those around us, maybe with a hearty laugh, a comforting word, a consoling presence, or merely by a loving sharing of the word of God. 
this if you are not feeling cold and inspired to traverse the geographical boundaries to become missionaries among the gentiles as saint paul says what to me if i don't preach the gospel first corinthians 9:16 how we do it depends on how the lord inspires us secondly about our inadequacies the limitations many people speak about look at the band of apostles and we find that this group did not consist of the best ones around jesus at that time in fact their cvs would not have landed them in in any lucrative or influential positions in the society many of them proved to be failures and even the cause of jesus' own suffering among them were the ordinary ones like fishermen there were the simple and innocent ones like nathaniel there were the despised ones like matthew the tax collector who would exploit others for money there were zealots like simeon who in his zeal for the law of moses despised others and also crooks like judas iscariot who only wanted to make money authority was given to all and they all did extremely well even evil spirits were subject to them and jesus himself said he saw satan falling from heaven luke 10:17 because it was his mission that they were doing and they were not focusing on themselves remember the law does not call the qualified but he qualifies the called the disciples were successful not because they were great but they were there for the lord and it is he who authorized them gave them power and this presents before us two lessons firstly don't look at how incapable we are how untalented we are to proclaim god's word to evangelize what is needed is a strong desire and trust in the lord asking the lord to make use of us you or others may be a judas in your desires a levi in our relationships extracting from all or a simon the zealot with com- contempt for all in your attitude but it is the lord who sends you and his spirit will fulfill it if we allow him secondly so many are often disappointed and scandalized by the contact of the members and leaders of the church where the shepherds not only really fail in their duty and hence the sheep are scattered but even abuse their power and are found wanting in fidelity though painful and sad the situation is let's not forget that the church the bride of Christ is also a church made up of imperfect members and like some of the 12 some may fail to be guided by his spirit but this should not deter us from being part of the body of christ we cannot cut our relationship with him the church will continue to be successful for it is not the mission of the disciples but of the lord and our focus should be on sharing the mission of christ for the world irrespective of how others do it may the lord bless all of us amen